Hey everyone, I'm Kenan Profit back with another BlenderBranch.com tutorial. In this tutorial, we're going to be doing a super simple uh, tracking and compositing. We're going to throw a Death Star in the sky. And this can be used for any planet or object that you'd like to be floating around. And let's jump right into it. So inside Blender, we don't need this default cube. So we're going to just delete it as well as the default lamp. I'm going to grab my camera, press Alt R, Alt G and then type in R, X, and 90 to rotate that camera by 90 degrees. And that's just cleared all the rotation. We're gonna jump into the motion tracking and I'm gonna load in my city footage. This is footage I got from my good friend, Seth Foster. You can check out his YouTube channel. And you can see it kind of lags there at the beginning. So I'm gonna go over here to frame settings and offset it by 100 frames. And there it just starts right on the motion, just like that. And now we want to track a point of high contrast. So I'm gonna grab this point, hold down control and left click, and that drops a tracker. We come over here to the tracker settings and then just hit track forward. We can track forward and backwards. And you can see because this was a simple tripod shot, it tracks no problem. Underneath geometry, we're gonna link empty two tracks and jump back into default. And you can see here we have our track link to our camera. And if we come up here to the location settings of that track, I'm going to grab the Y value and send it really far away. You can see if we type in an arbitrary value, you can see how that jumps 10 Blender units away. We're going to go something crazy, like 2,000. The reason for this is you want that planet to be really far away from the camera so that it doesn't jiggle around and move. Now, once you do this, you'll have to adjust your camera clipping settings because otherwise it's just going to disappear. So underneath clipping, let's type in something like 2,020. And then you should be able to see that track once you select it and scale it up. Now underneath background images, I'm going to add image, uncheck camera clip and drop in our city footage. There we have our footage and we can scale our track up a bit so that we can see it more. And again, you want to make sure that that's really far away. Otherwise that planet's going to be dancing around all over the place and it will not look good. Now I'm going to press shift S and put my cursor to the selected and then import the image as planes. That's an add on I use to import that image as a plane. If you don't have it, go to your user preferences, type in planes and you should see it pop up. Very useful add on. We're going to scale up this image You can go to the material view so you can see what it looks like. And I'll drop a link in the description of where I got my Death Star image. But again, you can use any planet or Death Star image you'd like. Now with that image in place, we want to make sure we parent it to the track. So we're going to select our Death Star image, hold down shift and right click to select the track and then press control P to parent that image to the track. Once that's parented, you can move it around, slide it and adjust it, scale it to where it is exactly where you want it to be. And voila, we have a planet tracking perfectly in our scene. Again, this was a simple tripod shot, so you might have to do a little more tracking work if you're moving around with a handheld shot, but the same principles will work just as well. I'm going to throw on some ambient occlusion and adjust my render samples to be just one since it's just a plain image. We don't need all those samples. Now I'm going to jump into compositing and I always like to adjust my scene a bit to have a timeline and lots of space, 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 space. I'm going to press shift A and drop in a movie clip node and load in our footage and we have our render layer in place. We can connect these with an alpha over node. Control shift and click to view that. And then I'm gonna drop in a scale node and set that to render size, just so that scale of our movie clip matches our render settings. And we'll flip these around here so that our render layer is in the bottom socket and our footage is in the top. And there you can see our planet composited in and we're done. <laughs> now, that's just to give a view, we can get rid of that alpha over node. Let's drop in a mix node so that we actually have some control over this. So. Control shift click same thing the footage goes on top and the render layer goes on the bottom and we're going to set this to screen and that gives a little bit of atmosphere in there i'm going to duplicate that mix node by pressing shift and d i'll drag it over set it to multiply and put that bottom color to black and now by doing that we can adjust this factor here and that uh, helps us to adjust the transparency of the planet so that's all to taste. We're looking at this through an atmosphere, so it's gonna be a little bit hazy. So that's our simple setup of getting that planet in there, but now we wanna be able to mask out the bottom of it for the horizon and also 
put it behind that building. So I'm going to come back into the motion tracking. We're going to come down here to mask and create a new mask. Now you can make your life easier and not put an object in front of it, but I find it sells the effect more if you have a foreground object in front of it. I'm going to just create a mask by holding on control and left click. And then we can just click around this building here by left clicking. And we're going to create a simple mask around this building. And yeah, there's these little windows or something that jut out. I'm not sure really what they are. This is in Grand Rapids, Michigan, which is not where I live. I live in Texas. But again, my friend Seth Foster shot this in Grand Rapids. So I'm going to speed this up. We're going to mask around this building. Close that mask by pressing Option or Alt C. And now we have a mask around our building. And we need to parent it to our track. So I'm going to select the mask, hold down Shift, and right click to select the track and press control P. You won't really see anything, but uh, it should be parented. If you move through the footage, it kind of roughly stays in line with that track. Now it's going to get off a few frames just because of parallaxing and things like that. So you'll have to go through. I like to adjust it every 10 frames or so. I'm going to turn on automatic keyframes. So I'll jump to frame 10. Just press A to select that G to grab and move it over so it's in place. And then I might have to tweak individual points as well. This shouldn't take too long because again, our footage is just simple tripod footage. Uh, you might have to do more tweaking depending on the complexity of your shot. And now I'm going to jump to frame 20. Again, I like to jump every 10 frames or so whenever I'm doing rotoscoping. It just uh, helps you to not go crazy. If you go frame by frame, you're going to go a little bit insane. Uh, but again, this is all as detailed as you want it to be. And how picky you are kind of determines the quality of your final result. So I'm going to speed this up here. I'm just making adjustments to my overall mask to where that building is completely masked out and tracking well with our track. That looks great. Again, only mask which parts you need. We're going to name that building, jump into compositing. And now how do we get that mask? Well, I'm going to just shift a search for a mask node, select our building mask, and we can take this into the factor of our screen node. I'm going to drop it in invert node and boom, it's behind our building. So that looks great. We have it behind our building, but now we want to get that horizon. So we could do the same thing. We could drop in a circle mask and put it here, track it to our track. But since we have simple footage here, I'm just going to use a mask right inside the compositor. So I'm going to come down here to map and ellipse mask and drop that in. You can see we get this little rectangle in our shot. If we control shift and click that and we can scale this up and it's a rectangle, but it's really there's an ellipse inside that rectangle. Now, if you hold down shift, you can move this around in smaller increments while you're scaling. I'm going to rotate it a little bit so that ellipse is around our planet and we can grow this. And now if we just control shift, click the mask, you can see the shape we're getting there. I'm going to scale this up so that we make sure we kind of cut off the bottom portion in a rounded way from the planet. Again, you can create your own custom mask inside of the motion tracking section, um, but we can get away with this. I want to show you because sometimes it's helpful to know that you can create a mask right inside the compositor. So there, that's working pretty well. I'm pretty happy with that, but I definitely want to add these two together. So I'll add them together using a mix node and set that to add. So now both masks we have look like this. And we obviously want to blur the horizon one. We don't really need to blur the building one too much. So I'm going to just drop in a simple blur node on the ellipse mask. And I'll set that pretty high to about 10. And there we get that nice horizon fade line going, which looks great. And now you can do some other things. You can uh, duplicate this blur node for the building mask. And I'll just blur this by one for each of that, just so there's a slight, you know, any of my imperfections go away. You can hide all your flaws with a blur node. <laughs> I'm going to make sure this image is desaturated. Obviously, there wasn't really co any color in there to begin with. But if you have an image with higher color, looking at it through an atmosphere, you want to make sure that's desaturated. And I'll blur it slightly as well. Just a simple blur node, just so it's uh, not crystal clear and in focus. Again, you want to make sure it looks like you're looking at it through an atmosphere. And that's pretty much it. Very simple node setup. That's how to composite a Death Star 
into really any scene that you want. Not a lot of complexity going on here. Of course, you want to drop in a color balance node and make it your custom color look. If you're doing a Star Wars theme, I always like to go a little bit green or teal with some of my brights. Get that nice foreboding look going on Death Star in your horizon. And I like to desaturate it a bit as well. So now if you hit render on a different frame, you should have it tracked perfectly in your scene. That planet having the nice horizon mask placed right behind your building and looking rather foreboding. It's ready to destroy your city. So there we have it. That's my final node setup for compositing a Death Star in Blender. All that's left now is for you to choose your output directory, name it something interesting, accept it, and set your render settings and hit animation. So that's it. That's how I created my Death Star scene. Thanks for watching, everyone. Be sure to like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next BlenderBranch.com tutorial.